Monday has not started well. Oh my god, it's tipping it down outside. By half eight, I mean it's just so dark outside, you probably can't see from there, but... Can you hear that wind and rain? I don't know if you can hear that on there. By half eight, we've had sideways rain, high winds, hail, thunder and lightning. It's been absolutely horrific. And I really wanted to get outside today, but it's just torrential. I think the highlight of today is going to be this smell. Oh my god, this is so good. I got this for my birthday. Um, I don't buy luxury things like perfumes. I put them on birthday and Christmas lists. Because I'm always getting asked, what do you want? And it's like, Pff. so I'll put down little luxuries that I would never buy for myself because they're insanely overpriced. So I have a few perfumes now that I've acquired over the last few years. And I'm quite careful about how much I use, so I don't just go and splurge it every day. Just, it's a treat. Oh my God, it smells just amazing. It's like the middle of winter out there. Um, this morning's coffee was the two of these. So I did in my food, um, my food audit the other day that I had some of these coffees which expired last year and I might as well use them. So I've got, uh, I've got a vanilla flavour Starbucks. I'd never pay for Starbucks. These were all free. I've got a, what's this one? That's just a coffee with milk from Starbucks. And I've got two of the chocolate flavour ones. You should have chocolate coffee for breakfast, really, should you? And I had two of the Minor Figures ones. I quite like Minor Figures as a brand. But they're expensive and I get them when they're free. So I put this, the both of these into a saucepan and heated them up and that was my morning coffee. So that's two gone and I shall use up those. They've been sitting around for such a long time and I needed to work for you a few, through a few things that I wanted to get rid of. So that's been drunk. It goes into the recycling. Oh, I want to be productive today. I had quite a lazy weekend. I did my cleans and made them into pies. Did some other bits and pieces but... It was quite relaxed, I wasn't busy busy and I wanted to at least get outside and have a good walk today but it is just horrific out there. <sighs> Show you how dark it really is. Look at that. <laughs> Front room, look at it. Oh my goodness. slightly better in the window. It's like my front room window is really the main place where I record because it's the best light. And I quite like standing up when I record. And it's why I'm often distracted when I'm recording and I'm looking elsewhere because the street is below and I'm watching people go past. And I'm not very good at staying focused. Looking at the camera and it's not even like I'm looking at you. I'm looking at me and I don't want to be doing that. I don't want to look myself in the eye. And I always forget where to look. The camera's there. I know it is. But I always want to go for the face. When I have the camera around the other way, you're not sure whether you've moved and you've chopped your head off or whatever. So this is how I record. I'm an amateur and who cares? <laughs> oh my goodness. There's a pigeon out there trying to fly and it's going against the wind and it's getting thrown around in the wind. 
It's horrible out there. I have one major project that I want to do. Ooh. Got something to show you. Look at the hail that's gathered on the outside of my window frame. Can you see that? That's this morning's hail. Yeah, so I have a major project that I want to do. It's not very exciting. I'll take you through to the other room. Into the studio. Oh, wrong light. Let's turn you around again. So, here is my, my office, my studio. I want to have a declutter. This rail is really annoying me. So I put this up temporarily to put all the vintage stuff on that I brought back from my friend. And I sold a load of it. And then I added to it because I had a clear out of my own. And I thought I'll stick it all on a separate rail. And then I'll know what I've got. And now it's just sitting there being annoying. Because I don't have an awful lot of floor space in here as you can tell. Um, I don't do pattern cutting because I just don't have the space. So... Oh, let me turn you around again. So, yeah, so that rail is annoying. You can see it just down there. That's the rail there. And it's just, oh, look at the glare from that light. I hate having lights on them. So, I need a clear out and I want to tidy up but there's nowhere to move stuff to from where it already is and everything has its place and everything is there for a reason there's nothing that's just oh I've just thrown that in the corner because there's there's fabric stashes and the packaging oh my god the packaging that I bring back from my parents they keep all the best bits for me so there's loads of bubble wrap and small boxes, good sized boxes, all sorts of plastic packaging and things like that. And I come back with loads of it every three months and then I try to use it all. I send it for vintage stuff and stuff that I sell on my Etsy page and my own page. And so that kind of sits in the corner being used slowly. But it's not a very big room anyway. I mean, in an ideal world, I would move this room into my front room and have a smaller front room, like a, a cosier front room, and have it in here. But I'm not going to start moving 12 and a half stone cast iron sewing machines around and putting sofas around. It's just not going to work. So it is what it is. I mean, when I first moved in, this was my bedroom. And my studio room was the back room and bedroom is now, and that's an even smaller room. So once I'd once I'd moved in here, and then I had lost my studio in town, everything had to come here, so I had to have a big shift round. But it's just so squishy, and I don't know. I don't know what I can do to change things around. I could move the tall boy around. Let's see that. I could swap the tall boy with the rails, but that's what's that going to achieve? It's just in a different position. I could clear some of these shelves, but these are all full of stuff. This is all haberdashery. That's all haberdashery and stores of stuff. Uh, stores of stuff at the back there. The windowsill has become my new storage space, or I'm saying new, it's been like it for ages. I put some plants in here the other day, because now the weather's changed. See so that I've added some greenery, because it makes it a bit more creative space. But, um, look at it. This is 
my windowsill. This is a board that I rescued. I was talking about rescuing things off the street the other day. That is a board that I rescued that was a perfect fit for this and create some extra shelf space. Um, I don't like this being here, but I had nowhere else to hang all these reels. And it needs to be near the sewing machine, you see, that's kind of the point. So I don't know what to do about that. I wonder if I should move that to there, get rid of all this. Move that to there, and then it's in front of the sewing machine. And off to the side. When I'm working here in summer, I'll open this window. Um, which is nice. <sighs> Springtime for me is often about... It's not like a nesting thing, it's like a spring clean thing and I like to move stuff around and I do get bored with the way things are laid out. So my front room's been moved around so many times since I've been here because I just get bored with the layout. The layout as it is now is pretty much how it will stay, I think, because there's only so many ways you can move a small room around. But I wish I had more storage space. I've got a recess. You can see that. So this is the recess where... This is the recess over the stairs, and in there is I've got suitcases that used to be where all my fabrics were stored until I got my tall boy back. Now they're I think they're just full of packaging. All the fabrics are now in the tall boy, but this is all packaging that my parents have given me. So everything is this is spare fabrics in there, but all of this is packaging. Packaging, 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 spare boxes. And I might just need to go through and just consolidate it a bit more. Um, it just... I don't get rid of it because that's not the point of what I'm doing here. I want it to be... You know, I want to reuse packaging and stuff like that. But um, maybe it'll just make me feel a bit better about it if I just go through everything and then just re repackage it so it's a bit neater. But there's a lot of good boxes in there, and a lot of paper wrap, a lot of jiffy bags. And it saves me a fortune across my businesses and means that I don't have to charge customers for packaging. And I even made some little labels that say, this is pre-loved packaging. Because I'm trying to be sustainable, that sort of thing. So they get added. Um... But yeah, I really need to um, need to go through things. Feeling restless, like I need to do stuff. And I don't have much on my list to do today. This week, what's happening this week? So this week, tomorrow evening I have a clean. Wednesday morning I have a clean. Thursday I have my next screening for the medical work provided. The blood tests that I had done on Friday morning come back okay. They've probably done them already and they'll probably look at the results today. Um, they're usually pretty quick. But if I don't hear anything, then Thursday's going ahead. Thursday's going to be a long day and I will probably talk about that. Mm, might talk about that Wednesday, might talk about it after I've had it done. I'll see how I feel. There's a lot involved in it. Um, but I know, I know what's involved. They've already told me. It's not like they're going to spring any surprises on me. But, um, yeah, so, I don't know. I'm in a weird, restless mood. I need to have a look at my lists of things to do. I'm at a loose end on Monday morning. If the weather improves, I will go out for a walk, but... Uh. really windy out there and temperatures are dropping again this week so April's a weird one. Right I'm gonna go and get on with stuff I guess. I've decided to tackle that. <laughs> if it's the one thing I do today I need to get to grips with that because it's driving me mad. 
back in my dressing gown. It's cold today. It's like 14 degrees on my uh, thermometer that I have on the wall next door. It's just so cold and I'm going to try not to drink as much tea today. We're going with water, but this is warm water because it's cold. So let's get started and see what we can do.
Right. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how much of a difference I made there. I've restacked stuff, got rid of some of the bags, so things stack properly now, which is better. And I know what's there now. The problem is that because it's all boxes stacked up on top of each other, it's not as accessible. So when I get a sale and I'm thinking about how I'm going to package it, I don't always think about the things that are at the back of the boxes. So I don't have a nice shelf where everything's laid out and it's easy for me to spot. Oh, that would be a good thing to use. So I forget about the stuff that's at the back. But the boxes are now more accessible and I know what's there. So in the back of my mind, hopefully I will now know what I have to use. Um, I've managed to remove some of the boxes that were balanced on top of those rails there. They're now in there and properly repacked. So it feels a bit more organised. But um, I discovered I had a lot more small boxes and packaging than I thought I had because it's been stuffed away at the bottom of um, suitcases and I need to now not accept any more boxes. The problem is whenever I go down to my parents they save for me all the bits that they think will be useful. So the small boxes, the bubble wrap, the the the, the, the scrunched up paper, all that sort of stuff. And it is useful but because it's there I find it really hard to say no because it's like oh I can reuse that at some point that will save me money. And a bit like in 2020 where I kind of developed this what if there isn't any mentality because of what happened with the supermarket so it's why I have more of a food store than I used to because you can't trust that things are always going to be available so it's that prepping mindset that I mean who knows if I suddenly get loads of sales I've got tons of wrap and stuff to, to use but it's probably not going to happen um, I don't know I mean, it's not getting in the way. That recess is a difficult space to use. I could put bookcases in it, but then that means a lot of the floor space is unusable because what if I want to get to the bookcases? So I've always had that little recess as the place where um, fabric stores and boxes went because it's, it's a funny little recess that's not really usable. What I should really have is a nice big curtain across the front of it so I don't have to look at it. Um, but at least I know what's there now. It's all useful bits and pieces. And if I had a high volume of sales, I'd go through that in no time, I should think, because it's all really good, useful, presentable, customer presentable stuff. There's some nice boxes in there, lots of funky paper wrap and things like that. So it's all useful. It's just I don't have the level of sales to justify having it all, but I just can't bear to just throw it all away. Because the whole point is that it gets reused and not thrown away. I could start up a, 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 re, a, a, a packaging recycling repository, which would be great, except how would I make anything out of that if I was giving it out to other people? Anyway, so that's a small amount done. Um, there isn't a lot else I can do in here to be honest with you. All this stuff is kind of there for a reason. It's there's a lot of packaging, there's a lot of supplies, I've got sewing machines on shelves which I use. Um, it's just really difficult because it's such a small, difficult space to work with. I want to get rid of this rail of stuff. I put a load of my vintage prices down yesterday just to get rid of stuff because it's like, ugh. But it's really hard to sell stuff on vintage. People just don't want to pay. Um, and the problem is because the postage costs are high. Even if you like list an item for a pound, it might in cost them an entirety of about six pounds because the postage goes on top. So you think you've only made a quid, but they've spent six or seven quid in total. And very often, I ain't got a prime I can get it cheaper. I mean, I don't even know what primer prices are like anymore. I haven't been shopping in a clothing shop or, or even browsed in a clothing shop since pre-pandemic. So I don't know how the prices have really changed. Um, I would say Vinted is cheaper than Etsy. It's cheaper than eBay. 
are buying and selling, I would imagine. It's just become a bit of a storage space rather than a workspace. It's a little bit frustrating. Hey-ho.